We're going to talk about a few things today. We're going to talk about how to prepare for accessible travel, what destinations and modes of transportation are the most accessible, and then I'll kind of tell you guys a few of my craziest experiences, and uh, hopefully you'll share some of yours with me as well. So first is how to prepare for travel. Many destinations around the world are much more accessible than others, if you are wanting to know how accessible a destination is before you go, then um, just use the magical powers of Google. Um, when, you, when I typed in wheelchair accessible London, for example, it gave me over 1.3 million results. Uh, hotels also are a major part of traveling. Uh, this was at a hotel in Melbourne, Australia. Many hotels online they may say that they are accessible, but then when you get there, they're not necessarily accessible. Um, I have called before a hotel, and uh, they told me that it was accessible, but after I asked a few more questions, I found out that the only accessible feature that they offered was an elevator. Uh, there was no roll-in shower or any form of accessibility. I probably wouldn't have even fit in the room. Um, so. By calling and really asking the right questions, um, you can find out. That is, uh, before you go, definitely make a list of wheelchair repair shops in the area. Okay, now which destinations and modes of transportation are accessible? Many destinations are accessible, uh, anything from the beach, to the snow can be accessible with the right preparations. Also, uh, more adventurous activities like skydiving or water skiing can be accessible. Uh, this was at an adaptive water skiing clinic that I did in Chattanooga, Tennessee if, uh, when I was about 16 or 17. And um, if you can tell from my facial expression, I was pretty terrified. <laughs> And about five seconds after this picture was taken, I ended up flipping under the water and broke my arm. But at least I got to do it, and now I never have to again. <laughs> okay. Flying can be one of the biggest obstacles um, when traveling in a wheelchair. Um, I constantly get a lot of people that email and ask for tips on flying, so I thought that I'd share a few of those with you today. First, I would say to request the bulkhead seating. They're usually a little larger, um, but many times at the bulkhead, the armrest will not lift up. So if you do need the armrest to lift up in order to transfer over into the seat, then maybe request the second or third row of seats instead of the bulkhead. Also, uh, put signs on your wheelchair with instructions of how to put your wheelchair on manual. Um, even if you're going to a foreign country, then maybe um, have someone translate the instructions into their native language before you go. Arriving earlier to the airport is pretty much a necessity for wheelchair users. Also, um, one thing that I started doing just a few years ago was taking my seat cushion onto the plane and actually sitting on it. 
And lastly, I would say to book your airport transportation before you go. Um, when you arrive to a destination, they may not always have accessible taxis. Cruising is one of the most accessible ways to travel, I think, uh, because everything is conveniently in one place. So you can go to dinner and then go see a Broadway show and then just go gamble all night, blow all your money if you want to. Train travel, um, I personally love train travel. Um, you can see a lot of great sights. Okay, uh, embracing the unexpected is something that you kind of have to be willing to do as a wheelchair user if you're wanting to travel. Also, um, another crazy experience I've had was on my first night in Munich, Germany. Um, I was on the it actually blew up, uh, sparks were flying, and the power in the entire hotel managed to go out. But luckily, they never found out that it was me. So, thank you so much.